Thank you, Pot Koss, for 35 South African Rand. Will you ever do a 5-inch X8 build video? I love a drone with motor redundancy. Um, I wouldn't hold your breath, uh, Pot Koss, um, especially because as long as you're running beta flight, even if you have an X8, you still don't have redundancy because beta, unless if you have coaxial, if you have a coaxial uh, X8, then then you will have redundancy because Betaflight will not be the mixer will be able to handle it. Um, as long as Betaflight is set to a quadcopter mixer, so I got a hexacopter from Flywoo a little while back and tested it with a motor because a hexacopter should be able to fly with one motor missing. It should become a quadcopter build basically. And it didn't. And the short version of the story is that Betaflight's mixer doesn't know how to recognize that a motor has failed and disable that motor. And so Betaflight's mixer, even if you have redundancy, will get confused when a motor fails and the quadcopter will crash. The only way around this would be if there's a way you can build an X8 where you have a coaxial X8 where the motors are top and bottom of each other and both motors are driven off a single motor output so that Betaflight is running a quadcopter mixer and Betaflight doesn't know that there are two motors running off the same output. In that case, the quad would keep flying if one motor failed. But other than that, as long as you have an octocopter mixer, Betaflight will not keep flying if one motor fails. It doesn't know how to do that. Now, if you're talking about a flight controller like, like ArduPilot, that's a different story. Um, I actually, I don't know if you guys can see this on the back there, does that look familiar? <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> because it's nothing like any drone I've built in the last eight years. Check this out, Blunty. <laughs> what do you think of that? Uh, I think it belongs at a museum. Well, you say that, <laughs> sir. <laughs> uh, this is the latest and greatest. This is a Holy Bro Pixhawk 6X... RG Pilot Pixhawk flight controller. This thing's like 350 bucks. <laughs> yeah. It's just definitely a different application than we're used to, that's for sure. Yeah, ow. I poked myself with the prop. Yeah, um I I, I realized uh that I, I I don't know a damn thing about Pixhawk. I've built an I iNav bird. I wouldn't call myself an iNav expert. I've built an iNav bird though. And uh I was like, you know, there's a giant gap in my knowledge. So I actually asked Holybro if they would send me. That's the Holybro dev kit. And they did. A video will come out about it soon. But I have now officially built an RG Pilot Pixhawk bird. And, uh, you know, so, you know, my, my, my new tutorial will be coming out soon. No. <laughs> um, and that flight controller will do redundancy 100%. But Betaflight won't. Will I have? I don't know about that. Maybe it will. You know, I built I built that thing, Blunty, and I have to say I was very underwhelmed at the end of it. And I'm gonna ca I'm gonna caveat that. I was underwhelmed because I built it, and then at the end I had a quadcopter that doesn't fly very well compared to an FPV drone, and doesn't hold position as good as a DJI drone. And I'm like, what? Why would you build one of these? You know what I mean? Yeah, it kind of just in the center. Does it have optical flow on it? So no, but I, it could, but it doesn't. I see. So okay. Its position hold is just GPS based, and of course that means it's kind of all over the place. You yeah. know, it'll it'll stay within about a two meter or three meter box, which is not that great. So I could put optical flow on it. Optical flow sensor, you know, another hundred bucks. Rain, laser range finder, 200 bucks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that, that kit is already like a five or $600 kit. And I'm like, why would I not just buy a DJI, a, a mini, a Mavic, a I Mavic think, mini? I think you, you've essentially explained why they are where they are in the market, right? Absolutely. This is why DJI yeah. is the best. Um, but I tried, but, but I don't want to, that's, I'm not really doing a good job as a content creator. If I take my first impression and go, this is stupid. No one should buy this. And then just leave. I have to think deeper because 
a lot of people out there are flying like Pixar flight controllers. Who are they? Why are they doing it? And, and the answer is that you see Pixar flight controllers. Well, first of all, you see them on airplanes, like bigger airplanes, uh, stuff that isn't a multi-rotor, stuff that DJI doesn't make. You want to fly for 45 minutes uh, with a fixed wing with VTOL capability? Well, DJI doesn't offer that. You're going to be doing that with, with but you can build it with a Pixar flight controller. And you see it like that flight controller has redundant gyros, redundant compasses, redundant barometers. It's got all kinds of sensor fusion stuff where if something fails or is giving bad readings, basically anytime you have a drone where if you fail safe or have a hardware failure, you don't want it to just fall to the ground and die. That's when those flight controllers start becoming interesting. Um, and so looking at that drone, I go, what's the point of this? But if you think of that as a test bed and, it, and you're going to take what you learn and develop there and put it on a piece of, you know, a $30,000 Cinelifter or an agricultural drone. Ah, now it starts to make sense. Maybe. Yeah. So like as Garter Rotor points out, the FreeFly Alta runs Pixhawk. Absolutely. Yep. So I have to kind of get out. I look, I look at that drone and I go, that drone is pointless. And you're right, that drone is pointless. That, that drone is like, you know, building a little go-kart. And you look at the go-kart and you go, well, this thing can't drive me to the grocery store and it can't like go around the racetrack. And it's like, no, it's what you learn from building the go-kart that takes you forward to bigger and better things. Um, Bum Troll, thank you for a six euros. I hear a high C battery can have risks. What are the downsides to a low C battery? Um, what are the risks of a high C battery? Well, you know, I wish you'd I wish you'd said more about that. Um, I've heard stories uh, of people with like a little 2S quadcopter that came with a PH 2.0 connector, and people replaced it with an XT30 connector, and they were frying uh, the flight controller because the, the 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 XT30 had less resistance and was letting current surges through that fried it. Like other than that. I'm not sure what a possible risk of a higher C battery is. Higher C batteries are more expensive, but other than that, you know, uh, you want high C. The downsides of a low C battery is you get you get a lot of voltage sag. Lots of voltage sag when you hit the throttle and and the battery gets super hot and puffs up and gets damaged. Any recommendations on the best 7-inch frame to buy? Thank you for 2 euros from Mato or Mato FPV. Um, I would, uh, if you want to buy a frame and build it yourself, I like the Gep RC Moz 27. It is a relatively roomy frame. It's relatively durable. Like the iFlight, the iFlight Chimera frame is super sleek and super good looking, but like it's so tight. If I had to actually build in it, I would just hate myself. So I like the Gep RC Moz 27. It's not the only good seven inch frame, but it's one that I've reviewed recently and really like the look of it. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best because there's other seven inch frames out there that people really like that I, I wouldn't want to insult them by suggesting that the Moz 27 is better. It's just one that came across my radar that I really liked.